Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, pray that you bless this time tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to sing those uh, beloved hymns. And Lord, for the message that they have, we thank you for the writers of those hymns. They still bless us, Lord, even though many of them are gone and at home with thee in glory. I pray that you just, uh, again, just get into the message tonight. Let the Holy Spirit move and continue to bless our church. Be with all the prayer requests tonight as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, I didn't really handpick those songs before the service. I got here and felt, did you think to pray? Then I, each section of the hymnal, if you don't know it, when you look in there, they're sectioned off by like the resurrection. You go over there, uh, the death of Christ, you'll find them. And then they're clustered around. So when I got there, I was like, oh, tonight we'll sing about prayer. So we sang, did you think to pray? I must tell Jesus. And then, of course, in, from last week's message, sweet hour of prayer. Uh, then the last one there was tell it to Jesus. And when we were singing those songs, some of those talked about sorrows. Some of those talked about troubles. Some of those talked about trials. And a couple other, um, uh, the other hymn talked about cares. Are you careful, careful and caring for things and worries and again, anxieties. And tonight, my message is cast about casting your cares, casting your burden on the Lord. Uh, I have to admit, over the past couple of weeks or so, I've just been a little bit... Uh, the devil's trying to through the cares of this life and we all have them and they're not going to go away. But what he tries to do through the cares of this life is to derail us. And again, we all have them. It's a matter of how you deal with the cares in the, in your life and how much attention you give it. Now the cares of this world can include fun things. So tonight isn't all just a negative. Tonight is some of the pleasures and fun things and things in life that we do can derail us. So let's think about the positives in our life that if we focus too much on them, the Lord doesn't want us to do that and put that before him. Because the whole idea of the Christian life is, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods. What? before me and for some reason in the world we live and i don't know if covid covid caused this to be even more now but there's a certain entitlement by people that they kind of pick and choose what they're going to do for god and how far they're going to go for god really the choice isn't up to us when god calls us to do something or presents something in front of us and we get faithful to it, the Lord would have us do it with all of our might. So think about the things in this world that people put before the Lord. And again, we all put something at times before the Lord, but we have to be careful that that doesn't become an idol to us, that that doesn't become some, something that we just completely serve all the time. And again, when we find it, the Lord isolates it, it says, see that thing right there? See that thing in your life? You're putting that before me. And there's no room for that to go before me. And again, it might be something fun. It might be something that you're committed to. But just watch. And tonight's message is an earnest, an earnest appeal to is there something in your life that is in front of Christ? or something and i have to tell you over the past couple of weeks or so the lord has obviously let things in my life and the cares of this world just take a lot of my time but again i have to be careful just like everyone else i can't let that take away my attention from christ i have to be faithful to what's in front of me and make sure that nothing as the song says nothing between us, nothing between you and the Savior, nothing between me and the Savior. We need that path to be clean and good. Okay, that's where I want to start tonight. So we're going to talk about cares, we're going to talk about burdens, the cares of this world. And today we're going to talk first off on just things in life that come up. And whether it be work, whether it be play, whether it be school, whether it be pleasure, 
any of those things that I mentioned right there. Say, I, people may say, I really love to work. You know, do you ever hear of a workaholic? Somebody just obsessed with work. That obsession right there can just cause them to absolutely get derailed for God. For God. And that's all they focus on. Focus on work, 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 and making a dollar bill and stacking up the Benjamins. And I'm going to do this. And this is my first and foremost thing in life. And the Lord comes second. Or the Lord might come third or fourth. Or the Lord might come ninth or tenth. And others, pleasure. I'm committed to this. I love to do this. I'm going to do this. This is my first goal in life to do this. And they forget all about what God would have them to do. Now, tonight's message is not to say quit work. It's not. Tonight's message is not to say quit the pleasures in life that aren't sinful. The sinful pleasures, you need to be careful with those, of course. But even the pleasurable things, everything has to be done in perspective, right? That God is first. What's the scripture say? Set your affection. What is affection? What is affection? A husband has affection for his wife. A wife has affection for her husband. They have affection for their children. A desire, a commitment, a love. Okay? Set your affection. Set your commitment, set your desire, set your love, set your affection on things above. Why does God want us to do that? Well, for one, it's for our own benefit, isn't it? Because when you die, you go to heaven, the Lord says, you set your affection up here. This is where your heart was. And therefore, I'm going to reward you for that. And won't it be great when you stand before God and the Lord rewards you abundantly and says, look at all you did for me because you kept things in perspective and set your affection up here instead of keeping it down there. Of course, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Your heavenly father knoweth, the Bible says there in the book of Matthew, your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of these things. So there are things in life that we all have a need for, but we got to be careful that we keep Verse 33, first and foremost, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, if all Christians lived by that verse, you probably wouldn't have got a seat tonight. We would have had to bring out chairs. But unfortunately, not everybody lives by it. And unfortunately, not everybody sets their affection on things above. And as you can see in the church age, that we live in today, the affection is not on spiritual things. It really isn't. And I'm not I'm, I'm not just preaching at this church. I'm everywhere. Look. I went by another church today on my way to work. I went over to St. Clair today, the hospital, on my way to work. Went by another church for sale. I went a different direction. Another church going up for sale. I go this direction to go home. And every day I go past another church for sale. Churches going up for sale all over the place. What's happening? The affections on the wrong things. The affections on the wrong things. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And look. let's look in verse 38. Again, we're going to talk. The first half of this is going to be on the cares of this world. And the second half is going to be on the cares of anxiety and stress and worry. So let's look in Luke chapter 10, verse 40, verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Now, right there, if you didn't know it, you didn't know how it ended, what would you think the Lord might say? You have two, two sisters. 
Mary sitting at Jesus' feet, hearing the word, and Martha's cumbered about much serving. Now, Martha goes to Jesus and said, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Not tonight. Could you have been out doing other things? Are there demands at home? You have something that needs fixed? You have grass that needs cut? Is there something you could have been doing tonight that you said, you know what, tonight I can't do that. I need to go to church. Some Christians may have said, I can't go to church because I need to do that. Can that wait? What's the good part? Martha, Martha. Lord, ever whisper you and say, Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> you're cumbered about much. Instead, this is what I wanted you to do. Again, Lord knows that needs to get done. But at the same time, don't substitute church for getting that done. Then you fall into this category. Who did the Lord commend? He said, one thing is needful. She hath chosen that good part, which shall never be taken away from her. And to this day, Mary would be blessed in heaven for this part right here that she chose the lord said that'll never be taken away for her from her never let's go over to mark chapter four we're going to do a blitz real quick on the cares of this world let's go to matthew first matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 i'm going to go through the parable of the sower in each of the gospels i want you to look in matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 It says in verse 18, now this is about a sower who sowed the word. He sowed the seed. And there are three or four places where it fell. And we'll get the context of the sower. Let's do that. Let's look in verse number three, just so we can get the context. And then the explanation we'll do from each of the gospels. It says in Matthew 13 and verse four, and he spake many things unto them in parables saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. So those seeds would have been worthless, except for bird food. They would have never brought forth anything. Okay, fowls ate them up. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and a thorn sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground. And I praise the Lord tonight for the seeds that fell in the good ground. Because you're here, and you're growing and learning and bringing forth fruit. It says, but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. So what, was the, what would the Lord have us do? The Lord have us bring forth fruit. We're, we're a plant in his eyes. It says in verse 9, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, now it says in verse number 18, he explains it. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So you're going to have people going to hell that hear the gospel. And before they can digest it and understand it, all of a sudden the devil does something to get the seed out of their heart. This is how powerful the word of God is. If the word of God can just take root. Today, on the way home, I had to get gas. And I pulled into the sheets over in Mount Lebanon. And there were about 10 different 
slots that I could pull in there to get gas. So I'm going and I'm looking and I'm like, I try to give out a gospel track to somebody in the pump that's pumping next to me, at least get a gospel track out. So I see the little, the little stalls there where the gas is. And I, and I, all of a sudden I turn in and I went, I was going to go to the one that was wide open, but there was a out of order yellow thing on. I said, oh, I can't go there. So I pulled in here. And next to me over here on the other side of the pump is a guy standing there and he's got a blue Mustang. So I went to get gas. I grabbed the gospel track. Turn I said, sir, I'm a preacher. Can I give you something to read? Oh, thank you. Now, I started to witness to him. And the Lord compelled me to talk to him further. And I said, do you know the Lord? And he said, some days, I guess. And I said, well, that'll tell you how to know the Lord as your personal Savior. And I said, you know, I met a lot of people in my life. And I said, and there's one verse that stands out when I tell people all that. And th I use this one. And I said, the Bible says, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And I figured, just get that little verse there. And if that can get in his heart, and he says to me, he says, I've heard that one before. And I said, well, amen, maybe he'll turn. And he, then he said to me, he said, before he left, he said, it was really nice meeting you. And he said, I want to tell you that the Lord has been there throughout my life for me. He didn't elaborate, but he shook my hand and he said, God bless you. And he got in that car park, never see that guy again. But one thing I know is a seed for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul was put into that man's heart, wasn't it? And he drove off. And, you know, through that one verse, the Lord could whisper to him and could say, that preacher, that preacher quoted to you a verse you already knew. What are you doing about it? That's how the seed works, doesn't it? Just get it into their heart. You never know. Now, he could have drove away and the devil could have fucked that out. Could he have? Could he be one of them? Could it have fallen on the, by the wayside and when the heat comes on and the sun and it scorches and dies? It could have fell in there where the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. Maybe it grows and the word gets choked and he bears no fruit. Or, or, it could get in there and it could bring forth fruit and grow up as a huge tree that yields forth fruit within his soul. Couldn't it? That's what we do, don't we? We get the word out. We get the word out. But we need to be careful because as we get the word out, we also need to remember that the parable was about the seed that's within us. So tonight, tonight, seeds number three and seeds number four. Okay? We're not seed number one because it took root. Amen? We're not seed number two because we got depth of earth. We're either seed three or we're seed four. So this is where the cares of this world they get to us. And again, we all have them. And if you don't have them, the devil will be sure that you do. And it'll happen at the weirdest times. You say, I want to get the family going to church. And you go outside and there's a flat tire. And your wife says, what are we going to do now? I wasn't expecting a flat tire. Man, I really wanted to go to church. So you have another car. You take the other car or do you say, I better go get that tire fixed. I need it for work tomorrow. What do you do? What do you do? Okay. All right. Here we go. It says in verse number 18, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So you don't want to be one of those seeds. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, 
yet hath he not root in himself. So this person here never got root, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Ever seen anybody like that? You're talking to him, and next thing you know, somebody at work pokes fun at him. Somebody they know pokes fun at him. Oh, you've been talking to that Christian over there. Oh, you've been reading your Bible. And all of a sudden, what do they do? Persecution comes. Ooh, I don't want to be labeled with, I don't want to be called a Jesus freak. I don't want to be labeled with him. By and by, they're offended the word, by the word. Persecution comes, and they've got no root. Person there, not in. Not in. But then we go to this one. In verse 22, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. And he what? Becometh unfruitful. So he was bearing fruit, which means that took in the root, didn't it? The roots went down and it began to come up and it was bearing fruit. And all of a sudden, and the devil's the best at it. What does he do? The devil then begins to put things in your path to derail you. So what's he? The care of this world. And that's not always a negative thing. Should you cut your grass? Or should you let it grow up over the house? Should you let your gutters fall off? If your furnace breaks, should you fix it? Should you let the water just leak all over the house? No. Tending to the house. Should you cook and bake and should you clean things around the house? Should you do the laundry or just let it pile up? Should you throw the trash out? Cares of this world. Should you go to work? Absolutely. If a man not work, neither should he eat. In fact, if he doesn't provide for his own, he's worse than an infidel, the Bible says. He's denied the faith and is worse than an infidel cares of this world should you go to school if you have to go to school you're in high school you're in elementary school, gotta go to school cares of this world not always bad and the deceitfulness of riches that's something there and america struggles with that that's big time in america the deceitfulness of riches riches get the best of christians and again, this is all in our walk for the Lord, isn't it? Can the, can the devil throw money in front of your path? We always say, the Lord blessed me with this. Okay, well, did he? What are you doing with it? If it's derailing you, you have to wonder where it came from. Would the devil make a Christian a millionaire to get him off the path? God knows some Christians may have gone to the mission field and might have won millions to Christ. But because they hit it rich, the devil got them off the path. And they never amounted to nothing for the Lord. Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, choke the word. Now, that's not the only, only stuff here. Matthew says two things. Luke and Mark, Mark and Luke, say a little bit more. We'll go there in a second. It says in 23, but he that receives seed in the good ground, and we should all say amen to this. Amen. Amen. Is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Amen. Which also beareth fruit. Who's ever led somebody to Christ? Come on. Who's ever led somebody to Christ? Who's ever witnessed to somebody, had a good witness? Maybe you never got them down the salvation path, but you witnessed to them. Who's faithful to pass out tracts? Who's faithful to read their Bible? Who's ever read their Bible through? Who prays? Who's prayed for more than an hour? You had a whole week. Come on, you had a whole week to do something with that sermon I preached last week. Prayed, sweet hour of prayer. No, we have to sing, sweet 10 minutes of prayer. Sweet five minutes of prayer. We should be able to, it's like singing that song. Oh, how I love Jesus. You know. 
Oh, how I love it. And we get the halo over our head. Can we really sing it with a good heart? Oh, how I love Jesus. He's my first. He's my, he's my first love, Jesus Christ. What, what did God rebuke the church in Revelation for? Many of them. Thou hast left thy first love. And didn't he rebuke almost every one of those churches? Why? Because they left their first love. Because they were lukewarm. Because they never stayed fervent for the Lord. Okay, but he that receives seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. Okay, now let's go to Mark, Mark chapter four, Mark chapter four. And the Lord throws in something else here in Mark four, Mark four. Now, if you wondered about those fowls, birds in the Bible were likened unto devils. You say, Pastor, really? Seriously? Birds in the Bible were likened unto devils? Yeah, study the birds in the Bible and you'll find the devil behind them. And in fact, in this, when it's expounded, in chapter 4, verse 14, look what it says. The sower soweth the word, Mark 4, 14. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they had heard, who comes now? Satan cometh. Who came in Matthew? The birds, the fowls came. So devils are likened unto birds. Satan cometh immediately and take away, away the word that was sown in their heart. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. That's how you can tell when somebody's really saved. That's a telltale sign of salvation. They're willing to talk about the word of God openly and in front of people. That's a telltale sign that somebody wants to confess Christ before men and has a, a desire to talk about the word of God. When somebody won't talk about the word of God and claims to be saved, chances are they're probably not saved. Okay. And that I find there, they have no root in themselves. In verse 18, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Now look what it says. And the cares of this world, he talked about those, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Okay, could we throw in the lust of other things? What do we lust after? And when we think about lust, I'm not always going to associate this with sin. But can we lust after things that aren't that that bring that take us away from the Lord? Absolutely. How many people, and it's not a sinful thing, but how many people are addicted to their phones? Could you say, Pastor, I'm learning? Pastor. I'm reading my Bible. Okay. But how many people have an addiction to it? Our hearts are connected to it. Ever forget it somewhere? Or leave it for about four hours? And you're working? And then you say, oh, I better what? I better go check my phone. Who remembers the days before this? when people called you on a landline. The phone's for you, pick it up. You go pick the phone up. When you left the house, you left the phone. And you were free. And if somebody couldn't get a hold of you, hey, I wasn't home. Do you have freedom now? Not if you're linked to this. Okay, cares of this world. Don't we heap them on ourselves? The lust of other things. Just one more short on YouTube. That's all I want to watch is one more short. Or I want to, I got to check. I don't know, even know all the applications. I, if you, if somebody could get up here and spot them off, they could say, well, Spotify or TikTok or what? Come on, Twitter. 
And, and you know, Ed Keogh, when he was here, he preached on, remember the message he preached on social media? And he said, yeah, Yahoo. He said, if somebody called you a Yahoo, would you like that? Or if somebody called you a twit, would you like that? Well, Twitters and twit and Yahoo and how many others? And he went through and he named some of the ones. And it was like, yeah, that's kind of funny. Like everything in regard to this is a slam against a human. When you think about all the platforms they have out there. And he went through each of them. And I sat back, I was laughing over it all. But the reality is we can get addicted to what's on it. We can get addicted to what's on it. Cares of this world, lust of other things, deceit. Just let me check one more stock. Deceitfulness of riches. What do they do? And again, you say, but that's a, it's okay to have stocks. It's okay to check my social media. It's okay to have a phone call and text people. Is that okay? Well, that's all right. Yeah. But what happens? You're walking for God. You find yourself with your affections linked to it. You can't stay away from it. Have you ever carried on a conversation with someone and their, their, their eyes are just down in the phone? Or try to play a game with a bunch of kids? A tabletop game? And every chance they get? Or the adults over there? It's like, we're playing a game. Can we stay off the phone so we can play the game? Again, you say, well, that it's not. It's a way to get you derailed. And again, the message tonight is not to rebuke you for doing that. Because the preacher would be a hypocrite. I have a phone. The idea here is, in all of it, come on, what's the idea? Keep Christ first. And don't let any of it take your eyes off him. Because if you do, or if I do, I become one of the third seeds. And guess what? God's word is true. And God knows when we get hooked into things, we're going to choke the word. And we're not going to bring forth fruit. And we're going to wonder, what happened to me? I'm not on fire like I was. In fact, I think I'm backslid. How did all that happen? You just don't wake up one day and say, I'm backslid. Right? You're on fire for God. You're witnessing and you're praying. All of a sudden you get out of bed and you go, I'm backslid. Is that how that works? The heifer in Jeremiah slid back. It says backsliding heifer. That's where the word comes from. The heifer oh, slowly slid back. It was a process. The object of this message tonight is keep Christ first and watch you don't backslide. And the devil will provide every opportunity. Again, he might throw riches on you. Nothing wrong with having it here. Here's the middle. Thank you, God, for bringing the riches in. Maybe it wasn't him. He let the devil. Got a pleasure you like? Got a sport you like? You got some kind of hobby you like? They're all good. Again, no sinful pleasures. Like to eat? Pleasurable. Is that necessary? But if 24 hours of your day is consumed with figuring out where you're going to eat, choking that word. Choking that word. I'm never going to get to the second half of this. But maybe I don't need to. Because maybe the Lord wanted me to stay on the first half. Because Lord knows. Wait. The Lord knows. That everybody here needs it. 
including me. Because this is real life. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Okay, Luke chapter 8 and verse number 4. And when much people were gathered together and would come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down. There, that's a little bit different there. It was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now it says in verse 14, And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and hear pleasures of life of this life it doesn't say the lust of other things so we've got four things now on the list and bring no fruit to perfection so if you've got each of them up you've got four different things that can get you normally i just go to matthew but when i was reading this i realized the lord adds in each of the gospels so there are four things that we need to be careful of pleasure lust cares of this world deceitfulness of riches. We need to be careful of those things. They can derail us. And believe me, as I've said many times during this sermon, the devil will provide them. Because there's one thing the devil wants. He wants you to get your eyes off of what's important. And if he can do that, and he can derail a Christian, he might cause somebody to go to hell. Because you realize if you backslide and you stop witnessing for God in your corner of the world, the people that would hear the gospel aren't going to hear it. Everybody could be on fire for God, but you have your corner of the world. Listen, I'll never meet the same people, 100% of them, that my mother-in-law Rose will meet. Will I? You talk about people, I don't even know who they are. I only know of hearing them through my mother-in-law. Never met half of them. But if she's faithful in her corner of the world, then those people have the opportunity to hear about soul-saving salvation. And the same goes for me. In my corner of the world, she's not going to know a lot of people that I know. But my responsibility is to be faithful so they hear the gospel. And if I backslide, I could damn their souls. See how it works? Don't let these things derail you. We, the Bible says, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. We're not ignorant of them. And if you look up the word hinder in the Bible, Paul says, Satan hindered us. If he could hinder Paul, what's he going to try to do to us? Got to be faithful and stay faithful before the Lord. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go to prayer.